Hello and welcome back to another workbench special. One of my favourite types of videos, restoring older stock. Now, I've got a requirement in a future video for some of these R205 vent vans on my Hornby and Triang with the sliding opening doors, which these were meant to have. Well, it's fairly stiff. I've got three of these and a brake van in uh, sort of one-off packet uh, deal. This is a Triang brake van. You can see, yeah, see the Triang there? And I have to say, this is one of the nicest examples that I've ever had. And yeah, it follows the same basic design, well, we'll do it as the Hornby one, same numbers and everything. But it's in beautiful condition. So a very sensitive restore might take place on that one. And these little fellows are a slightly different story. We've got glue marks on the corner there. Of that one. Which end was it? It's uh, quite apparent that the roof has been glued back on. And there's a nasty bow between the metal plate that sits on top of the chassis and the body of the wagon. Now number three. As you can see here, it was incredibly loose. It was glued together. It was in one piece when I took it out of its little packet that it came in, but um, a slight flex and it, it all shot apart. This is the metal plate that sits on the chassis. And it appears to be slightly bowed. So that's gonna be put in the vise and straightened up. Rear fix to the chassis put the doors in and re-glue that on there. So that should be a good, easy enough fix to do. Again, there's glue in around the roof. I don't know what these have been used as uh, target practice by the military or something. And uh, what have we got? Wheel-wise, this is obviously a, a later Hornby model. Well, it's still got made in England on it, which is good, with some of the old silver seal wheels, a bit of rust, in that corner there that I'll need to be looked at. This one has got triangle wheels and probably due to no lubrication they have worn the axle holes, the axle bearing holes, oblong. So there's quite a bit of movement. So we shall have to see perhaps um, a wheel set with plastic pinpoints rather than metal would be a good idea. We may have to drill it out and put cups in, just to make sure she's okay. Okay at the moment, just with the wheel, original wheels. So there's the tasks at hand, the first one to deal with will be this one. So let's go through the steps and uh, hopefully it will be of interest to you. Right, we are, the initial clean ups have been done. Amazing the amount of uh, dust and that that was inside this chassis. Now I've had to chip away with knives and a bit of wet and dry. As much of the old glue, I've just spotted another bit there that has been swamped in on that. And the same on the metal plate, both sides. That is now level. And it would have located on four pins, one in each corner of the chassis, which are no longer there. However, two are. So I can line it up on that and probably glue it in position then. And then the body will go on this. And again, there is, well, one and a half pins left, so we will get an alignment of that. And just make sure that it's level. Loads of glue out to be removed. Quite interesting here. Um, doors are actually quite accurate compared with the real thing, which did exist. But look on the back. We've got an L for left and an R for right. So for the first time since this little van was built, we're using the assembly instructions. Someone at uh, trying would have done. Isn't that a nice thought? Um, apparently there were only six of these vans ever built. And they were built at BR Derby Works in 1962. And 
had no ventilators on the ends, which has been correctly portrayed. Oh, look at those horrible blue marks. A little bit of weathering, perhaps, will get rid of that. Um, they had continental styled shuttered ventilators in the doors. And they were thought to be associated with the conveyance of market garden produce, such as tomatoes, but that has never been confirmed. But at least we know they existed, and the model is pretty accurate with the corrugated um, end and those doors. It's nice to know, isn't it? And I noticed from the picture, which I probably shouldn't show you because of copyright. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is silly. If you want to look up this van, you'll find it in British Railway Vans, number three, uh, by Chinoa Publications, compiled by G. Gamble. Okay? So if you want to look up your vans and find out the prototypes, that's where to look. It's a good publication. Anyway, so now the reattaching is going to take place. So there he is, reassembled. And uh, much more solid find it helpful to tape the doors shut and to the roof when you're putting them on because they slide within the metal chassis plate. Now looking at the photograph, three hole disc wheels are appropriate for these vans. And I just happen to have some of the super expensive Hornby three hole disc wheels. So looking at the bearings, they don't look too bad. I reckon we could put them in with a nice bit of uh, grease to keep them going. And then we'll have a look at just weathering the ends where that uh, glue line has been done. I have to have a think about it. I'm not sure if white is the correct colour, or grey is the correct colour for the roof. Difficult to tell from the black and white pictures. Wouldn't have imagined it would have stayed that colour. The um, older trying model is a nice grey, as you can see. And uh, I think um, we might copy that. Just, just noticing something. Credit where it's due. Can you see on camera that in the middle here we have an indentation that sort of goes in? I suppose it was to stop the doors overclosing. That's on all the models, including the trying one. Well, guess what? So it was on the real thing. So fair play to them, even back then. Quite a small detail was being modelled. So this is the slightly later van, I think. Uh, as you can see in that corner, we got a nasty bit of rust and a little bit there. On this side, this door doesn't seem to run on its track properly. And I think really that rust needs to be dealt with and the only way to do that is to clean it right back and repaint it. So there we have it. All three are done. All with metal three hole disc wheels. Regarding the brake van, it was in such good condition that the only thing I did was change the wheels to metal wheels. And there we are, three new sliding door vans to add to my one that I already had, so it means I've got four now, which is cool and a nice new trying brake van which I know I've got loads of but you can't get over how good they were made really it's a long time ago now trying a mm, little bit more work to do well this one the door was open a bit too easy I'm not quite sure how to stiffen that up a common problem with these um, vans is that the doors are too floppy and as you run the train the doors flop open now to stop that just take a very small amount of Vaseline, put them in the top and bottom runner and wipe down afterwards and you will find that uh, smooth, reliable, unwobbly operation occurs. Yeah, you can still slide them. Top tip there.